Yeah, patinas still don't have an engine, but it is right yonder, right there. It is about to go in here pretty soon. And it got me thinking, you know, because one thing I screwed up on this engine, well, many things that screwed up on this engine besides all the, uh, you know, the crappy Chinese parts that uh, I had tried out was this right here. Now there was nothing wrong with this. This is MSD Pro Billet Distributor for a big block Mopar, which is a very good distributor. But here's the problem I had with it. And I also have this problem at events and car shows talking to people is vacuum timing. Nobody or hardly anybody runs vacuum timing like they should be, or vacuum advance, I should say. Oh, my arm's getting tired. Let me hold this phone better. Here we go. I'm just using my cell phone this time because this could be a quick video. But uh, so even if you have a big cam, like the cam that's in this engine is a 237, 242, uh, 575 lift at 109 lobe separation. And it's got trick flow heads. It's 11 to 1 compression. And you know how much timing I run in this motor? 45 degrees at idle, of course. So, but at wide open throttle, it drops back down to 32. And the reason you want to do that is for vacuum. The more vacuum that engine makes, the more efficient it will run. That engine, which is a 489 stroker, and what I had just told you, got 19.1 miles per gallon in this car. Granted, it has a six-speed transmission, but still, 19 miles per gallon out of a 489 cubic inch stroker. And why you want to run 45 degrees of timing is a more efficient combustion chamber. You want it, when the engine is at low cylinder pressure, you want as much timing as you can throw at it to make it run better. It'll run more efficient. It'll make more cruising power, which, hold on, yeah, just arms getting tired here. So on the highway, uh, we'll go with the general right here because I just did that one recently. Okay, the general. This has a bigger cam than patina. This thing idles at 15 inches of vacuum and on the highway at 70 miles an hour, we're at 19 inches of vacuum. And same thing, 45 degrees of timing at idle, 32 at wide open, and it is perfect. So the more vacuum you can run at idle, and like, so a lot of people are tuning with their eyes. So they're, they're looking at the timing light on the balancer with their eyeballs looking, okay, the book tells me I need to be right here. No, use your earballs. So when you get that engine fired up, of course, you know, a lot of it is carb tuning as well, but also the more vacuum advance you run or the more vacuum you run and the more efficient the engine runs, the better the carburetor will run. But anyway, back to the timing part of it or the advancing distributor. So when you get the engine fired up, forget the timing light for at the moment, just forget it. Fire it up, crank, 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 put more timing in it, more timing in it until you, and put a vacuum gauge on it. So you can use your eyeballs if you're deaf, you know, put a vacuum gauge on it and listen to the engine. If that thing is running so, it just runs smoother and smoother and smoother, and then it starts to go downhill again, back it off to where the highest vacuum you had, and then check your timing. It'll probably be between 40 to 45 degrees. And that is where you want it to idle at, and that is where you want it to cruise the highway at because it's low cylinder pressure. You're gonna get the most efficiency out of that engine for idling and cruising. It's gonna make the spark plugs last longer. The engine's gonna be more efficient. And the, another reason for that is carb tuning. So if you run vacuum advance, you can, it's gonna have a stronger signal on that carburetor. So you can, you don't need as much idle screw out on the, uh, let's say Holly. You don't need as much idle screw out because the engine's more efficient, has a better vacuum signal. It's gonna pull on that idle jet better. So you can screw that sucker in. And then when you're on the highway, you don't have as much fuel coming through the rear butterfly or the rear idle uh, jet, rear idle circuit. Cause you know, at the, on the highway, you're gonna be at the transition slot circuit by that point on the, on the primaries, but at least the rears, you don't need as much. Um, and so, but back to where I screwed up on this uh, Pro Billet distributor, this thing does not have vacuum advance. 
and I noticed a significant mile per gallon drop and I lost two inches of vacuum going away from the factory style Mopar vacuum advanced distributor to the MSD. I wish MSD had a big block vacuum advanced distributor. They don't. They have one for a small block, but they don't have one for a big block. So even though I've got that badass distributor, I'm probably gonna end up putting the vacuum or the vacuum advanced Mopar distributor back in it just so I can get my miles per gallon back. I get more efficient idle and cruising and around town and I get my miles per gallon. Another example. Hold on one second. Smurf. Okay, this is a 440 cubic inch trick flow solid roller cam. It's 238, 243, uh, 580 lift at 109. 11 to 1 compression with a freaking dual quad tunnel ram on it. 14.1 miles per gallon on the highway with no overdrive, a 293, 293 gear, and a stall converter. That is pretty damn good. And this is probably close to a 600 horsepower car, if not right at it or a tad over. This thing hauls ass. That thing hauls ass, but it's just right behind Smurf. Every time I think the general is like, oh man, this thing should be able to outrun Smurf. Then I jump in Smurf and I'm like, oh hell no. This thing will stomp a mud hole in the general. So, you know, I kind of forget which one of my cars is faster because I'll jump in one for a while and I'll be like, oh, this thing hauls ass. And then I jump in the other one. I'm like, oh no, this one's much faster. You just forget. Anyways, Patina should actually be the fastest of them all. Bigger cubic inch, more power, lighter car. This car is actually super lightweight. Full turnkey car with full sound dead and sound or a sound system, uh, full interior, full exhaust system, AC, everything. I mean, all steel car, all glass with that big block in it and the six speed, 3,550 pounds. Lots of trickery things done to get that point. But uh, anyway, we're not talking about that right now. Okay, another thing is, well, the carburetor tuning part of it, me and uh, Tall John with uh, John's, Tall John's Mopar Fun Shop, or Tall John's Fun Shop on YouTube, very guru carburetor guy. I mean, we both do a lot of street tuning. Yes, most guys buy a carburetor, pull it out of the box, adjust the idle screws, adjust the idle blade, and then just wide open throttle, pull a plug, yeah, horsepower. But then they totally forget about what they drive on 95, 99% of the time, which is just your driving circuit. They never tune that. And then they wonder why they foul plugs all the time and it runs like ass on the street. So anyways, me and John will be doing a video on that later but it's where you hook the vacuum up to the engine. You don't want ported vacuum. You want straight manifold vacuum all the time. And plus on D cell, uh, oh yeah, so another thing, um, on D cell, you want that sucker to max out vacuum and it'll get rid of the popping, the banging, it'll just, it, it'll make the engine run better all the way around. And so, yes run vacuum advance all the time at car shows i'm always telling people why do you have your vacuum line unhooked oh i don't need it yeah you do and then so i go through and tell them and i see them like uh, whenever next time i see them they're like dude you were right that thing runs so much better i know it works well it's like dude you're boring this is not like wrenching or thrashing on cars. This is me just trying to share my real world knowledge on what I've learned about daily driving these things. So all these cars get driven thousands and thousands. Oh wait, we're going by the insurance. 5,000 miles a year total on all these cars. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that car gets 15 miles per gallon it got 12.1 miles per gallon towing when I was going to duct tape drags with uh, the 71 charger on the trailer. 
12.1 with a 550 horsepower 440 cubic inch motor no overdrive transmission 2600 stall converter and 323 gears 14.1 miles per gallon by itself more power 293 gears stall converter 19.1 miles per gallon six speed bigger batter motor of course transmission mostly what did most of that <laughs> but uh anyway to sum this up yes guys run vacuum advance so most likely you're going to be between 40 to 45 at idle and direct port vacuum right to the intake manifold not to the ported vacuum on the carburetor you know, we, well, there is a direct port on the carburetor. Usually most time there's two ports. There's ported and there's direct. You want direct. So if the engine's running, pull those lines off. Which other, which other one, the, whichever one has vacuum at idle is the one you want to tap into. And then you will probably end up having to retune your carburetor because it's going to be having so much more vacuum that it's going to be running rich. So then you're going to be taking fuel away from it at idle, which will then give you better idle fuel mileage well, a bit or better idle um, efficiency with fuel and you'll get better miles per gallon on the highway it'll just be better all the way around it's great i mean if i can get a dual quad tunnel ram motor to get 14 miles a gallon with no overdrive no nothing you can too with a single carburetor so just think about it guys use your earballs, take notes and it'll work out just fine actually most betterers 